experts to uh, to testify at trial over this evidence. Wait, I've got to go back though. This is so bombshell because right. this is what you said originally. Only right. some type of high level security person could get someone on a plane and and, uh, and, and going back. The, the gate person was arguing at first, and he basically dropped the hammer, and I'm the boss, and boom, he gets on. Only senior security could do that, and and uh, I've looked it up, you've looked it up, you're right. They have that additional humet or uh, uh, level where a profiler can interview you, and only security could bypass and intimidate a gate person into, into not doing their job, you have it right there. And we know the State Department, months after you first documented it, admits that they were basically ordered to help uh, get him through. So we have them. My God, Kurt, this is incredible, and thank God you were there. And none of it was reported in the media. But it, it was even worse than that, because Chambers was clearly irritated over this. He has to delay the trial, right? And there was a whole hearing over this. But then he said... You know, how can I even be sure I have all the evidence now, Judge? You know, I'm going to ask that if there's any other evidence, that it be turned over to me immediately so I can at least look at that before the trial. And what, you know, what I would expect the government to say is, oh, you know, we gave you everything already. That's not what they said. What they said was, we have some other evidence that's secret. I think they said secret. I don't think they said top secret. But they said, we have some other secret evidence and we're not giving it to you until Judge Edmonds looks at it and decides if you should have it. And Judge Edmonds then said, well, I'll look at it and I'll decide if you can have it within the next two weeks. Wow, so the so, headline should have been in the New York <laughs> Times. It should have been the New York Times. Secret evidence being withheld in underwear bomber trial. Uh, bomb, but no, 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 it's just there's no news about this. Right, and you know... Why, let's say, okay, you believe the official story. He's some kind of crazy lunatic, Al-Qaeda guy, whatever. Why is there secret government evidence being hidden from the defense in this case? Why? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Well, it's clear, Kurt. I'm going to have to have you on the radio slash Skype as well on the uh, daytime show 11 to 2 in the next few days. This is so incredible. And, and, and hopefully we can interview you as the trial progresses. But other bombshells sure. from your court watching, what have his lawyers told him? Have you tried to say, hey, look for this angle? This is the MO of how they set people up. Yeah, you know, I, I've met with his, he doesn't have a lawyer, remember, he fired his lawyers, all he has is a standby lawyer, which is, uh, in layman terms, it's a helper, okay, but Umar still gets to make all the decisions, so I've talked to his standby attorney, I don't know, five, six different times, and I actually met with him for a few hours in his office one day, and I, I said, you know, I, I want to make sure you know what really happened here, and, and you know, uh, this is my blog, and make sure you read all my posts and evidence I had. And he said, um, yeah, we've been reading your blog, and we've been getting our defense theories on the case from your blog. So I, to me, that was kind of flattering. No, but, you were uh, there. You're an eyewitness. Right. Uh, and he said, basically, you know, we didn't even know some of these things. We're not getting these details from Umar. And, uh, you know, it gives us a whole new angle on the case. We didn't even think of this uh, entrapment defense at all until we read your blog. But that being said, he told me that, again, standby attorney, this was six months ago or so. You know, we totally expect that we'll be, that him and his firm would be the full attorneys on the case and not stand by it by the time trials happen. Now, that hasn't happened. He's still representing himself, which to me, tells me one thing he's in on this too now how he became umar i'm talking about how he became in on this cover-up i don't know but well it's like mcveigh i've talked to lawyers involved experts police they basically told him you do this or your whole family's dead that's one of the oldest tricks in the book they can also get a mentally ill person tell them they're a secret agent and then threaten them i think you'll find this is basically a playbook that they follow, and when you see the telltale signs and then confirm them, there it is again. What what does the defense think or the standby lawyer? What do what did what does your gut tell you as a survivor of this, Kurt? What does your wife think? As far as the defense? No, I mean what do you th what do you think's going on with Mutalib? Okay. I think he's in on it. Now I'm not sure whether this happened recently or he's been in on it all along and he could be in on it by being promised his release 
you know, maybe they'll send him to Guantanamo Bay and release him. I don't know. Or it could be a threat or it could be torture. I don't know. You know, I asked his standby attorney that question and he didn't really know either. All he said was, you know, I, I haven't seen any evidence or heard anything that he's being tortured. But America does it. Torture. Oh, I forgot we do. It's the new virtue. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if if uh, Anthony Chambers was running this case, which he's not, he told me the defense would be entrapment and I would be one of the main witnesses at the trial. Obviously, that hasn't happened. It's well, standby happen. lawyer says the defense would be entrapment. So that's that's being looked at. My God, this is incredible. But he's he doesn't have a say so. Remember, he's only standby right now. So Umar is calling the shots. So and I obviously I believe that's intentional. And what I, I'm seeing now is the last hearing, which I think was uh, 9 15, September 15. I, I couldn't make it to that one. I had some hearings of my own I couldn't get out of. But uh, there are reports in the media that Umar was acting crazy, refusing to button up his shirt, refusing to stand when the judge came out and he came into the courtroom yelling, Osama is alive. Okay, to me that tells me one thing. Uh, every time I've seen Umar, he's been very calm, reserved, very soft-spoken, not acting crazy at all. So to me, he's been told to act crazy, act crazy throughout the trial. Yeah, that was in the news. That was in the yeah. news that he did all that. Right, exactly. That's totally opposite. Which is another telltale sign. All this other bombshell stuff, the whore media, the complicit globalist media, the crime syndicate media, they don't cover it, but now they cover the outburst because it fits into the new legend. Well, I think he's being told to do this because otherwise people paying attention now for the trial would say, well, who's this guy? He doesn't seem very scary. He's just this small, reserved little guy. You know, I think they're telling him that crazy so it can be put in the headlines. You know, he did this, this day or that. And that's why he's representing himself, too. So the real story won't get out. But well, Kurt, this is too <laughs> incredible. And the nightly news is going way over. Definitely, I need to get you on the radio in the next few days. Uh, uh, quickly, quickly, just give us a preview. What else have you learned? Um, you know, though I hit the main points already. I think um, I'm going to know a lot more soon. The um, jury selection happens October 4th, and we have opening statements uh, starting October 11th. So I think you're going to start hearing a lot more and I'm going to be able to tell you a lot more though. You know, those were the main things that I've hit recently, but of course there's so much to the story. I can't really, Oh, it's going to take a it. long time for me to even be able to digest this. I'm going to have to rewatch this interview several times. Uh, as we end the uh, broadcast here, Kurt, please stay there. I want to get you set up right now for the radio show. Obviously, as soon as you can, you're a very busy man. Uh, you have a lot of courage and we just appreciate your time. Uh, I understand why. Well, we'll, in closing, correct me if I'm wrong, you sound now not so much shaken, but uh, you're realizing that, th that the rabbit hole goes very deep. I mean, for you to say, look, this country's done, it's cooked, stick a fork in it. The problem is this country's been seized by this global corporate crime syndicate and it's being used to take over the whole world, so there's nowhere to run. And believe me, I've thought about this a lot. I'm getting chills right now. We've got to fight these people. But, but it, certainly 18 months ago, you were not committed. You just said, I saw this. It's suspicious. It should be investigated. Now what you said has been confirmed by the State Department. You've watched the cover-up. You've watched all this other evidence, and now you're really facing it. I think as other Americans have the experience you've had, in that is our hope. And as people in government and media, it's time for them to decide what side they're on. Which This is not like we're just working with Boss Hogg here and, ha-ha, it's some corruption, good old boy stuff. This is really nasty, targeting our basic liberties and freedoms. The question is why? Because the foreign banks have imploded the country, and they know when we find out that we have been robbed, if we say no, we don't owe these derivatives, they're going to all go to jail. But if they can put a dictatorship in of this oligarchy, of this police state, we're going to be their slaves. So this is all the marbles. This is everything on the table, Kurt. And, uh, I mean, I know I'm ranting here at the end, but this is one of the most powerful interviews I've ever done. Uh, in 60 seconds, your comments on what I just said. Uh, you know, I, I agree with you, Alex. You know, I, witnessing this story from the inside out, I've seen how it's played out over the past year and a half. And, you know, I was just a regular guy when this happened. I was, was nobody. 
I didn't really have these extreme thoughts of the government or anything. And, you know, uh, these are thoughts I've developed over the past 20 months, doing my research, talking to people, talking to uh, Umar's standby attorney, going to court hearings, talking and talking to other passengers. Yeah, his standby <laughs> lawyers think the same thing. He does. Now, he, he's kind of hesitant to go out and say that, but you may yeah, yeah. see that come out during the trial. I don't know exactly how much input he'll have, but if he has his way, this is going to be the case. I'm skeptical that will happen, but yeah, I've developed these thoughts over the past 20 months. They're entirely justified. They're backed by my eyewitness count, other evidence I've come into. And, you know, if you don't like what I have to say, I, I'm sorry, but if you would do all the research that I've done, I think you would come to the same conclusion. Uh, and I, I think the USA is finished. Well, I yeah. hope you're wrong because we don't have anywhere to run. Believe me, if there was some place to go uh, free of these people, I'd go there. Uh, this is the only ship we've got, and it's on fire, but all the other ships are on fire. Kurt Haskell, we appreciate your courage and glad you're here reporting for us. Uh, you're a victim. You're somebody who could have been killed by this, but you've, you've, you've certainly uh, had a lot of courage, and I know your wife has uh, as well. I'm sorry, yeah. your Skype's got a little bit delayed. Say it again. Sorry, Alex. I said I could have been killed by the fire, but not by the bomb. The bomb couldn't have detonated, but you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Kurt Askell, thank you so much. We'll talk to you very soon. No problem. Oh, man. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. We've got uh, Dr. Andrew Wakefield in here, who the mainstream media claims has been discredited on the vaccine issue and autism. The opposite. It's turned out that they made it up and lied and said that uh, his, his evidence was a fraud, but now it's turned out it was all true, and a bunch of other private scientists and groups have confirmed his research to a T. It turns out before he did his research, it had been done, and now since after. And uh, now it's been confirmed that the Gardasil vaccine separately, the government admits 18,000 plus uh, adverse uh, reactions, uh, and of course some deaths. And meanwhile, they've got Gardasil spokespeople out there saying no one's been hurt. It's perfectly good for you. Dr. Andrew Wakefield, tomorrow, in studio with us. We'll take you out uh, to the end with a short clip from him uh, on the radio show in studio Friday, breaking down what's happening with Gardasil in California. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars Nightly News. And what we're going through in California, you probably know it, this, this bill AB 499 at the moment, is taking away the rights of parents to determine whether their children get vaccinated. So girls as young as 12 can go to school and secretly get the vaccine of their own volition, hepatitis B, HPV, and the rights are taken away from the parents to look after their children. This is an utter disgrace.